Hello and welcome to the video. This is a video in the Painless 360 Answer Series and this one is for a gentleman called Batmo Juice. What a fantastic name. Batmo was asking for a quick overview of all of the things that you'll see when you're looking on websites like this, uh, RTF, BNF, PNP, Kit, and what that actually means in terms of what you're buying. The other part of the question here is very much around the actual pieces that come with it and how ready to fly doesn't mean that it actually is. So let's deal with that part first before we get into what all those three letter acronyms actually mean. So if you're starting out in the hobby, there's a very good chance that you'll start with a ready to fly model that comes with everything. And we'll get onto a little bit more about what that means, but it'll be the model, the battery, the charger, the radio, the receiver, it'll have all the servos and linkages all set up inside. It's a great way for somebody that's coming into the hobby to get everything they need in one single box. But that doesn't mean that because it says ready to fly or RTF on the box, that it actually is. It might have been bounced around in transit. Things may have become loose. It pays whenever you get a model like this to actually check, irrespective of what kind it is, to make sure that when you take it out of the box, that things like all the screws and bolts are tight and nothing is loose. The other thing that is not included in any of the boxes is the skill and experience in order to fly these models. It does take a little bit of time to get models uh, to fly like you see in YouTube videos and there's lots and lots of practice. Big part of that practice is crashing. It's just one of the things about it. Have loads of videos if you're looking to get into something like fixed wing in particular, but it goes for anything that flies. Uh, they tend to not like being smashed into the ground at high speed. Well, been smashed into anything actually. And that is part of how you learn. Sometimes you'll learn by having a near miss. More often failure is a much better teacher than success. So expect to go through quite a few models so you'll end up with lots of spares. But one of the big tips I'll give you is if you're getting into the hobby, try and get hold of the simulator. There's lots of free ones kicking around now. I've reviewed quite a few on the channel and they can save you an absolute fortune because if you crash in the simulator, it doesn't cost you anything. You just hit the reset button and you start flying again. It is a substitute for physical time uh, on, on a model that's actually flying, but it's great to just help get that muscle memory so you've got a better chance when you're actually flying in real world conditions to recover the model before it actually hits that ground or something else. Models aimed at a beginner tend to have things like stabilizers inside as uh, those people like ZOHD have things like the co-pilot things like Horizon Hobby will have the AS3X I think it's called stabilizer system in it it will list out in the description of the model quite clearly when it has a stabilizer inside. And stabilizers are great. They're like training wheels when you are learning to ride a bicycle. However, it will get to a point where you don't need the training wheels anymore. And actually, once you take the training wheels off, you'll find they're a lot more fun to fly. But they're a really, really good support when you're getting into the hobby to stop you getting into those situations where, again, it'll hit the floor or something else. Now, before we get into the next slide and we talk about ready to fly, bind and fly, almost ready to fly, kit, PMP, and what those things uh, mean, it, there is no hard and fast rule. There tends to be some kind of guidelines, and that's what I'm going to talk about. Always read the description on the website for the model that you're looking at. It will usually list what comes in the kit, but more importantly, it will also usually list the extra things that you need in order for that piece of technology that model to work and that's typically going to be things like a radio or receiver maybe a battery or something like that as well but before we get into that let's start at the very top and look at ready to fly or rtf as the first one we look at of those three lecture so as i've already mentioned ready to fly tends to come with everything you need in the box there's the model there's usually a battery a simple charger a basic radio the receivers installed and set up and wired the radio is bound to the receiver typically and the model memory is all set up now again that doesn't mean that in terms because it's ready to fly in the box that you can just take it out and you can just fly it and it'll all work perfectly there is a learning curve to go up but in terms of the physical pieces you need in order to go flying, it should come with pretty much everything. Double check with any ready to fly model that there isn't any also requires at the bottom of the listing, because in theory you should get everything. 
Now this is again where most new pilots will start who already don't have an investment in a more expensive radio or charger or LiPo batteries kicking around and it's a great way to get into the hobby but there is a downside in that things like the charger tend to be very cheap and cheerful so do the radios the radios typically won't buy into more than a handful of models if you're lucky and they tend to be quite plasticky uh, ready to fly models are great when you're starting but once you have had one or two you'll realize that actually it's worthwhile you investing in a computer radio that will actually buy into lots of different models and you can have them all set on, on there and you'll probably invest in something like a LiPo charger, a proper battery charger as well, because the charger that comes with these things will typically take ages to charge any battery. So the next one to talk about then is the ready to fly kits that don't quite have everything. These are almost ready to fly. So ARF or ARTF is what you usually hear them uh, talked about as. Now these are aimed at those pilots who've already had a couple of ready to fly kits or already own some of the equipment and they don't need everything. What can be missing is usually going to maybe be a radio, it might be uh, the battery, it could be the charger, there'll be something missing. And again, if you look down at the bottom of the listing, it'll very clearly state, hopefully, what the things are that you should have already in order to make this a complete package that you can go out and fly. Bind and Fly is a category of almost ready to fly. Bind and Fly tends to be models that, so long as you have a radio that can bind to the model, then away you go. So you get the model or the electronics are in it, you typically will get a battery. Might even get a simple little charger in there as well, but it is missing the radio. Bind and Fly models tend to be designed around specific radio systems, so they'll be designed to uh, bind to things like FreeSky compatible radios or Spectrum radios or Futaba or something else. And you get them and you can bind them and set them up and away you go. So it's typically bind and fly, you'll have everything in there apart from the radio, but you can also get instances where they will be missing the battery as well, and there'll usually be some kind of upsell on the websites for things like this for you to buy those extra elements that aren't included as part of the box. PNP, plug and play, are the models that are starting to miss more and more things out. So there is a radio in this, there's probably not going to be a receiver. It'll probably come with the servos that are needed, the ESC and the motor and the prop, as well as the actual model itself. But things like the receiver, battery, the radio, your charger, any FPV equipment, typically will be separate. And these are the kind of models that you tend to get into once you've been in the hobby for a little while, because you've already got the radio, the batteries, the charger and everything else. You don't need to buy those again and get the little plasticky things that you get ready to fly kits. You get these and then you add in a receiver that's compatible with your radio, bind it up and set it up and away you go. And then that leaves the last one, which is the kit. And kits are usually pretty much just the foam. Occasionally you'll get extra bits in there as well. So you will have to locate your own servos, ESC, motor, battery, you're gonna need your charger, your radio, and everything else as well. And kits are the kind of thing that I've been building recently from people like uh, E-Wings with the Vorticon and things like that. Uh, they're immense fun, great fun to build if you've got a bit of time and very satisfying to get into the air because you know they're flying because you've actually built them properly. But for a new pilot, there is uh, the level to entry is a little bit too high. So typically the way it will work is that you'll start out with ready to fly packages where you get everything and then you'll very soon get bored of the plasticky cheap radios and the terrible chargers. You'll invest in those and then you'll start buying uh, things like bind and fly, plug and play and ultimately kit based stuff. Again, there's no hard and fast rule for this. Everyone has their own particular interpretation uh, of what almost ready to fly versus bind and fly versus P and P is. It pays to look at the listing and look at exactly what is included in the kit and more importantly in the list of what else you need to have in order to make it fly. Thank you for spending your time today watching that video. You can find me in all the usual places on social media and if you're trying to learn about a subject then check out the playlist. All of my videos are organized into easy to follow playlists that if you're trying to learn a topic will take you from the basics right the way through to some pretty advanced stuff.